Alright guys, today is a, another episode of the best of the rest, basically covering um, the games that happened over the weekend that I watched and like didn't make a video on. Um, so yeah, first Leicester beats Leeds 1-0, um, which I feel just like the result doesn't reflect how the game went. I thought Leeds were the better side. And it was a massive improvement under Jesse Marsh in his first game. Uh, like the the improvement he's had within one week on his team is incredible. I think um, uh, it, it, they they were just really unlucky not to win. They they were better at attacking and they were better in defence as well. Um, I I thought they looked more solid defensively. I, I don't know if that's because they maybe had a couple of players back or a couple of more centre backs more than they have done recently. Um, but they they just looked stronger. Like they always had at least uh, four players back, and it, it felt like when they went forward as well, they the players darted forward rather than just amble forwards and, you know, pass it around, which the Le Leeds haven't got the players to do that. Like, you, to do to play that sort of football, you have to be like a Manchester City or Liverpool. And Le Leeds just aren't that. Whereas what they've got is they've got a lot of players who have, a, who have pace and can run, run at defenders like Jack Harrison, Dan James, Rafinha, Rodrigo. And they caused Leicester so many problems. And if it wasn't for Kasper Schmeichel being on really good form on Saturday, Leeds would have won that quite comfortably, I think. Um, he made some brilliant saves, Kasper Schmeichel, um, to, to deny Rafinha, to deny uh, Harrison. Uh, I think Dan James also had a good chance that he put just wide as well. Um, I... I, I Felt as though on another day we we would be looking at that and going Leicester have got still got quite a few defensive frailties, um, but having said that they did take their goal really well from Harvey Barnes brilliant one two with Kalechi and Nacho, um, and brilliant finish as well from Harvey Barnes. Um, yeah, he took took the goal really well, and yeah he. he Barnes, a year ago, we were talking about him for potentially getting into the England squad. He didn't quite make it. Um, but I, I think if he can, you know, consistently perform at a good level, which he can do, um, then, he, you know, he, he's in with a chance. If I'm putting money on it, I don't think he quite does enough to get in the England squad for me purely because the amount of attacking talent that Liverpool uh, England have right now um, but yeah he's still doing really well I, I thought when uh, Jamie Vardy did get subbed off I thought mm, that this Leicester might struggle here because uh, it felt like the times they were getting through uh, Leeds was through uh, the pace of Jamie Vardy and uh, Balls ping played over the top, um, but in the end, Ian Atchou uh, uh, assisted the goal for Harvey Barnes, so it worked out quite well. But yeah, Le Leeds were really unfortunate, I felt. Um, but yeah, definite improvement. Okay, so uh, Palace also beat uh, Wolves 2 0, which I mean, I don't know if it was really a shock result in the end, because Wolves recently, it feels like, haven't been that great. Um, I, I, I don't know if it's the fact that that Arsenal game a couple of weeks ago sort of knocked the stuffing out of them a little bit. Um, but yeah, they, they just haven't been quite at the level. Definitely defensively, they, they were before. Um, I, I couldn't understand why Bruno Large dropped a few of his key players uh, on Saturday, like Raul Jimenez, um, Right, I think Eight Nori was on the bench as well, and the, yeah, that that confused me a little bit because the the three up front they started Huang, Hichan, Pedro Neto, and Pedence. That it, it was a similar forward line that Wolves had to play last season when there was no uh, Jimenez, obviously due to that horrific injury, and it really. Uh, 
it didn't work yesterday and it didn't work a lot last season really. They they really were missing Jimenez um, and as soon as Jimenez came on he seemed to make a difference. Um, like the, the the best cap, the best chance of the game did come through Jimenez picking up the ball in midfield, laying it off to Pedence, who laid it through to uh, Shaquinho, who you know had his chip saved by uh, Gaeta. But take nothing away from Crystal Palace. First half they were absolutely amazing. Um, Michael Elise was on fire. Same with Zaha, Mateta. Jeffrey Schlupp was probably the best out of the lot as well. Um, Schlupp was managing to get in behind Wolves' defence really easily, down to his electric pace. But Wolves still, like, they, they just weren't, there was no solidity defensively um, that they usually have. And that's happened in the past two games. I've watched them against West Ham, it was the same. And uh, yeah, on Saturday, it, it was just so easy for Palace to get in behind. It was a poor goal to concede the first one. Uh, when Sahar was played in behind Cody, he managed to cross the ball in and uh, Mateta managed to uh, get there just before Sar did, flick it over him and eventually give this, like, bundle it in the back of the net. Um, and yeah, it just wasn't like the Wolves we've seen for the majority of the season. Um, yes, and the the, the penalty it, it was too easy for Schlupp to get past it, the likes of Ruben Neves. Um, I can't remember who else it was. I think it might have been Johnny and also Max Kilman who eventually fouled him. Kilman this season has really impressed me, but um, yeah, yesterday really struggled uh, to deal with Wilfried Zaha and uh, Mateta. Um, yeah, Zaha, Zaha took the penalty, uh, tucked it away in the middle of the goal. Um, it wasn't the greatest penalty I've ever seen, but he scored, so that's all that matters, really. Um, definitely not Zaha's worst penalty this season, though. Um, I think that one at Carrow Road has got to go down as one of the worst of all time. Although, then again, it might not even be Crystal Palace's worst penalty of all time in Premier League. I remember Jason Punch and took one at White Hart Lane a few years ago now. Jesus Christ, you could have three goals on top of each other and it's still gone over the bar. Um, but yeah, the, uh, Palace were the better side. Wolves weren't simple as, really. And in the final game I watched on Sunday that wasn't the Manchester derby. In fact, it was the only game I watched on Sunday that wasn't the Manchester derby, actually. Uh, Arsenal beat Watford 3-2 uh, in a really entertaining game. Watford thought they took the lead after just 15 seconds. Uh, but it was just offside. It was a case of Arsenal being uh, asleep defensively. But then Arsenal just turned it up a notch with the attacking football that they played. Um, Bukayo Saka would like being one of the performances of the season, I think. Uh, maybe that's a bit far, but it, it was a like, brilliant performance from him. Uh, the, the first goal that Arsenal scored, brilliant play between Odegaard and uh, Bukayo Saka. 1-2, a uh, brilliant flick from Odegaard. And uh, Saka laid it off back to him and he put in a brilliant finish as well, Odegaard. And yeah, the Arsenal were just brilliant. But then Watford equalised with an equally brilliant but different type of brilliant goal. Uh, the ball was crossed in by, I think it was Kiko Femenia and Cucho Hernandez. Oh my God, what, what um, like an acrobatic effort it was. Um, he, he caught hold of it really well. It, it was quite similar to uh, Ronaldo's against um, Juventus in 2018, I think it was. A just brilliant overhead kick. Obviously, it didn't, he didn't jump as high as Ronaldo before anyone comments on that. But you can't expect someone who, Cucho uh, Hernandez, I'm guessing, is about five foot seven at the, the most. Um, but yeah, it was brilliant overhead kick. Arsenal then took the lead again, uh, for this time through Saka. Nice one-two with Lacazette and a really good finish uh, before getting a third after half-time. Uh, again, a really work, well-worked team goal. Lacazette lays it off to Martinelli and Martinelli puts it in the top corner and then Sissoko got uh, 
a consolation goal right at the end. Um, and yeah, Ars Arsenal attacking wise were just super. It, it, it was like watching Arsenal back in 2013 when they had uh, Santi Gazzola, Aaron Ramsey, Jack Wilshire. Uh, who else did they have then? Mesut Ozil, obviously. Um, just a superb team goal. Like my, one of my favourite goals of all time was uh, there was a goal Jack Wilshire scored against Norwich, and um, it, it was literally just Wilshire, Cazorla, Giroud, Wilshire, Giroud, Cazorla, back to Wilshire, one touch finish. All these one touch three yard passes in a triangle, and they've got about six Norwich players around them. And he just falls to Wilshire, and and the finish. He doesn't even look where the goal is, and he puts it bottom corner. That is probably one of my favourite goals of all time. But anyway, back to this game. Um, what Watford played quite well, but it just feels as though when you play quite well and you're the side struggling to stay up, and you lose, that's not a good sign. Usually, um, I can't see Watford staying up this season. I think Watford and Norwich are two teams that are going to go down. And that final relegation spot, I still can't decide over who's going to get it. Because Burnley have won a few games recently. Everton have a strong squad. Leeds played really well on Saturday and you think they might turn it round. Brentford won on Saturday as well. And Newcastle are clear of relegation now. So, yeah, it's going to be close.